As believers in Christ, we have dual citizenship. We're living on the earth, but we're also part of the kingdom of heaven. So how do we live according to the systems of heaven while we occupy our earthly life? That's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. I want to thank you for joining us for today's edition. All this week, we're going to talk about understanding the kingdom of heaven. It is tantamount that we as believers understand the kingdom of heaven as it's described in the Bible and how we're to live in this earth, yet following the systems of the kingdom of heaven. But first, before we get into the word today, I thought you might like to see, as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. You know, our secular media, bless their hearts, they can't help themselves. <laughs> They're just so negative and all the fake news and all the spins that they put on stuff, it just really paints a distorted, untrue picture of what's going on in our nation. And a few days ago, Abigail Robertson, granddaughter of Pat Robertson on CBN, gave a great report of what's actually going on in our nation right now as we speak. The kingdom of heaven is at work in America. Watch this report and I'll be right back. Congressman Mike Boss didn't like what he was seeing in our country in the beginning of 2017. Protests were happening more often and many well-known people made it clear they did not support the new administration. So his wife had an idea. They should collect thoughts and prayers to send to the new president. We thought maybe we'd get 30, whatever. Uh, it came back, there were hundreds. People from age five to almost 100 wrote the president. The boss read through all of them to make sure only uplifting messages made it through. There was a 90-year-old woman who it, on it said, I've never written to a president, but I'm depending on you, uh, and, and I pray for you every day that you know, that, that, that we'll straighten this country out and it needs it so bad. Boss had the letters delivered to the White House and had no idea if they'd be read or not. Then, a few months later, he found himself in the Oval Office with the president. He all of a sudden turned at me and he goes, Bossed, Bossed, prayer cards. And I went, wow. I said, yeah, we, we brought, sent you some prayer cards over. A White House aide then pulled the bag of prayer cards off a shelf and brought them over. He said, you know we use these every day. And I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, that's why they're here. He said, we use them every day. And it wasn't just the president who read them. I turned, and honest to goodness, I turned and hit chest to chest with the vice president. And he goes, he goes, Mike, he's not joking. We read these every day, and they're so wonderful. Almost a year after that meeting, Boss received a picture of him with the president holding the prayer cards. His office decided to post the photo on social media. It went up three days after the Florida school shooting that killed 17 children, and the timing caused a great deal of internet backlash. There was an atheist group uh, that got on social media that said, um, here we have this shooting at this school and all you're going to do is thoughts and prayers and it was and it got real negative from then. Many people assume the picture was taken that same day. It's upsetting that in today's media uh, they would take give a, a, a false impression of what it was and then badmouth what we did. Is there other action you can take besides prayer? You bet. But you can't not pray if you have if you're a person of faith. You have to. Boss tells CBN News he knows firsthand the impact thoughts and prayers can have on lawmakers. Scripture is pretty clear that we need to pray for our leaders. And it's something he's put into practice his whole life, no matter what side of the aisle the president was on. I served with Barack Obama in the state of Illinois. Know him well. Um, don't agree with him. Didn't agree with him on quite a few things. But I never did not, I, I, I never did not pray for him. Despite the negative press, Boss tells me they already have a fresh bag of thoughts and prayers ready to go, and his wife hopes to soon collect submissions from around the country. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Well, there you have it. The other side, 
The knowledge of the truth makes you free, free from error, free from lies. I guarantee you'll never see that piece on the secular news. So how do we live in this earth and abide by the kingdom of heaven system? Well, the Bible has the answer. So let's go to the scriptures. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and let's look at verse 13. And Jesus is talking to his disciples. Primarily, uh, primarily he's talking to um, uh, Peter. And he says, when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say you're John the Baptist, some Elias, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said, well, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. And I say also unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now, he wasn't saying he's going to build the church on Peter. He said, upon this revelation of me, upon this little piece of revelation of who I am, I'm going to build my church. The, build, the church is built on the foundation of, which is Christ and the acknowledging of who he is is what Jesus said he was going to build the church on. And he said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Did you get that? I hear people all the time, even minister groups. I was invited to participate in an idea exchange several years ago in Oklahoma city from ministers want to know what the church is going to look like in 10 years. And Oh, we need to do this. We need to do this. And what about this? What's this going to happen? Oh, God's going to judge it. No, no. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Do you know what that means? The, the gates of hell, the powers, the authorities of hell will not prevail, will not succeed against the church. Remember that the next time you hear all kinds of fearful and, and negative, uh, you know, news about the church. And now here's what we're after. Verse 19. And I will give unto you, you that recognize that Jesus is the Son of God, you that recognize that the church is built on the recognition of who Jesus is. I will give to you believers. I will give to the church the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now the church has not been exercising its authority in the earth. That's one of the reasons things are so bad. The church has been dumbed down watered down to an event, to a pop culture event, experience, etc. The church is the body of Christ and the power of the church has been uh, not received in the spirit in which Jesus told Peter. He said, I want you to bind on earth. Notice, I want you to bind on earth. I want you to loose on earth. The earth is where the church is commissioned to right now. The church age, we're still here and we are to preach the gospel to the world. And the Bible says the gospel is the power of God. So we're to bind. What are we to bind? Who are we to bind? Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Who are we to loose? What are we to loose? We're to loose the angels of God. We're to loose the ministering spirits. We're to loose the blessings of God. But here's what I want us to deal with. He said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Say it out loud. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, he didn't say the keys to the kingdom. He said the keys of the kingdom. 
If I give you the keys to a building, you can get in it. But if I give you the keys of a building, you can open every door in the building. The keys of the king. Now, here, here's how it literally reads. I'm going to give you the keys from the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom from the heavens. I'm going to give you the operating system. I'm going to give you the combination. I'm going to give you the five-digit code. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom from heaven. Uh, go over to Matthew 6. And uh, this just came to me. Matthew 6, verse 10. Thy, this is part of what we know is called the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, this is the will of God. According to the Bible, it's God's will that's what's done in heaven is done in the earth. Is any corruption in heaven? No. Any sickness and disease in heaven? No. Uh, any lying and stealing in heaven? No. Um, any a demon possession in heaven? No. So God says, what's done in heaven, I want done on the earth. Well, what is the the agent of change, the agent in the earth, the church. The church is the agent of God, the hand of God, you might say, the mouth of God in the earth. Please get this, folks. We, we, we go to church Sunday after Sunday, if, if, if you go at all, and this generation, <laughs> they think regular church attendance is once a month. They think regular church attendance is every other week. So you don't have the same culture in existence today, even in the church as we had in my generation growing up. I got so tickled the other day, my granddaughter, Abigail, sent me a picture of my great-grandson, her son, my great-grandson. He's five years old, and well, he will be this month, five years old, and he is, um, he has been, picked and used in the Dillard's uh, children's commercial boy in their magazine. Uh, he's been photo on the uh, head of the kids directory, Christian kids directory. Uh, he's a very photogenic young man <laughs> and he loves the camera and uh, they have been using him in the Dillard's catalog. So she sent me the latest picture. He's advertising boys clothing and he's dressed in a suit and a tie. And I mean, it's sharp. I mean, whoever put it together did a great job. And he's standing there. He's, he's smiling. He's, he's five years old, dressed in a suit, and a shirt and a tie. And so I texted uh, my granddaughter and I said, wow. I said, he's looking good. I said, if you'll find out uh, where I can buy that, I'll buy that suit for him and give it to him for his birthday. She said, well, I don't know uh, that he would wear the suit much. Uh, and then he, she asked him, I said all that to say this. She asked him, she said, um, Jace, what do you call those clothes that you have on? He said, those are pastor's clothes. Those are pastor's clothes. Now he's only seen me now when he comes over to the house, of course, I'm in, you know, working in my garden or something like that. But he sees me most of the time dressed like this. Now, here he is, five years old. This is so good. Listen to this. He associates, he identifies with a suit and a tie with pastor's clothes. Those are the clothes pastors wear. Those are the clothes my great-grandfather wears, and he's a pastor. Those are the clothes that, my, that pastors wear. So he's thinking that the suit he has on is pastor's clothes. What a great identity to, to seed into your children <laughs> that they equate bringing glory to God, dressing up for God. I, we need more of that in this dumbed down pop culture church. We need to understand that in heaven, you know, I, somebody told Keith Moore one time, God don't care what we wear. Keith said he used to. Go back and look at the priests. Go back and look in the Old Testament. 
look in the New Testament. All of their garments were to glorify God. In the Old Testament, the priest was told exactly what to wear. Sheba, Queen of Sheba, came to visit Solomon and was almost fainted at how Solomon and his staff was dressed. In the New Testament, in Revelation, you will see that the saints of God, that's you, that's me, we get to heaven, we're going to be clothed in fine linen. Have you been to the store lately and looked at fine linen? It does make a difference what you wear. I'm not clothesline preaching. I'm just trying to show you the, the kingdom from the heavens is different than this secular world. <laughs> I heard a preacher friend of mine the other day say, man, he was preaching in his church and he was dressed in blue jeans and he said, he said I'm, I'm so glad I've been delivered from tradition. And I'm thinking to myself, you, you haven't been delivered from tradition. If you're going to follow a biblical tradition, he said, I, I don't have to wear what anybody tells me. I can, I can wear what I want. And it doesn't make any difference. It does make a difference if you understand the kingdom from the heavens. Now, we live in this earth. Again, this is not closed line preaching. This is, but we should always present our best to God our best for God. Those of you that wear a coat and a tie to work five days a week, Monday through Friday, what do you wear to church on Sunday? Now you got me on this. <laughs> what do you wear to church on Sunday? Blue jeans and a sweatshirt? Who are you glorifying? You glorify your job and your boss and your, your workplace, and then on Sunday you slouch, slouch down. You slop down. You, you dress down. No, sir. We should always glorify God. I was doing a wedding. While I'm on this, I might as well just stay here for a while. I was doing a wedding. This was many years ago, and I, I, don't, I don't do weddings anymore, but I was doing a wedding at another church. Actually, uh, the girl in our church that I was asked to do the wedding for, she was marrying a young man from another church, and they wanted to have the ceremony at their church. I don't normally do weddings at other churches, but because she was a daughter of one of our staff members, I agreed to do it. And so I go over there, and at the rehearsal, I mean, I'm dressed like this at the wedding. I'm dressed in a black suit and tie and so forth. And at the rehearsal, the, one of the ladies that was responsible for the weddings at that church, after it was all over, the rehearsal was over, she came up to me and she said, she kind of looked around to make sure nobody was listening. She said, Pastor Caldwell, we just so miss the way you're dressed. She said, at our church, nobody wears a tie anymore. Nobody dresses up to go to church anymore. They all wear their, you know, their casual clothes. She said, I miss that. So you see, people, people are dumbed down because they want to be relevant to the culture. What culture? We're, our citizenship is in heaven. Now, this is just one item, and I'm not nitpicking on this. I'm just saying everything that we do should represent the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Just, you know, translated, I give you the keys, the authority to operate in the kingdom from the heavens. Did you get it? Kingdom from the heavens. Here's another way. The messianic kingdom on earth, the sphere of profession, the earth sphere of the kingdom of God. You'll see in the Bible the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. You'll see those, those phrases, those words used interchangeably. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. What's the difference? The, I'm going to tell you, the kingdom of God is all-inclusive. The kingdom of heaven is the earthly sphere of the kingdom of God. Heaven is located in the Bible. Uh, the Bible says uh, the, in the sides of the north, the city of the great king, heaven is a real place. It is 
in the northern part of the universe. It's a planet. It's where God is, Jesus is, Holy Spirit's on the earth. It's where all of your loved ones are that have died trusting in Christ. It's where we're going to go. The rapture of the church takes place. We're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. And we're going to go to heaven for seven years where we're going to receive the rewards for what we've done in his body and the marriage supper of the lamb. And then we're going to come back with him to this earth, his second coming. And we're going to rule and reign with him on the earth for a thousand years. But the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom from the heavens is referring to the system of heaven, the system by which God operates. Heaven is a real place. It exists. But the kingdom of heaven is a system of operation. Now, I hope you're getting this. The kingdom from the heaven is a system of operation. We're talking about understanding the kingdom of heaven. How does heaven operate? Uh, the Bible says that we are to use the same system that is used in heaven. The Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6, 10, Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. God intends for us to use the system that he uses in heaven on this earth today. The kingdom from the heaven, the system, a strategy, a system of operation, Strategy is a system, a way of doing things. It includes what you ultimately hope to accomplish, a system that produces the results you desire. Systems are used by all the major corporations in America and around the world. Let's just take a few of them that you'll recognize. McDonald's, FedEx, Walmart. Those are just three. You can just add on a myriad of corporations that use systems. Um, they use the same system in America at McDonald's that they use in Russia. I've been to some of the Scandinavian countries, European countries, and if you can find a McDonald's over there, you don't really know the difference by appearance of the McDonald's in Moscow that's the McDonald's in Little Rock. They're built the same. They have the same features, the same everything. The, the language is different. The hamburgers are the same, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Why? Because they have a system. And it don't make any difference whether the, the hamburger is in Moscow or Little Rock or Hot Springs or Jonesboro or Pine Bluff or Mountain home, the, the system is going to produce the same results, be they good or bad. So according to the Bible, Jesus told Peter, I'm going to give you the keys, the authority, the system, operating system of the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to show you how to use the operating system of heaven on this earth. And then he goes on and says, while you're on this earth, you have the authority and the power given to you by me, Jesus is talking, to bind and to loose. This is how the kingdom operates. Understanding the kingdom of heaven is tantamount. You've got to know how the, how the, how the, the kingdom of heaven operates so you can operate in that system. I uh, was asked, invited uh, because of VTN, because I was a CEO of VTN several years ago, I was asked to attend a strategic leadership seminar at the U.S. Army War College. And I went for three days in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and we walked the battlefield, uh, the Battle of Gettysburg, to see how they fought the war, what their strategy was, and what they hoped to accomplish by their strategy. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't know. I've also got lots of leadership books, Abraham Lincoln, George Patton, Churchill, uh, Roosevelt, Reagan, all, all of whoever's written a book on leadership. And uh, The Art of War, 
written by Sun Tzu, who it gives you three distinct uh, characteristics as to how to win your battles. And the first thing, he says, you have to know your enemy. Well, in the Battle of Gettysburg, uh, a strategy is not just getting from point A to point B. A strategy is what do you hope to accomplish with your strategy. And the Confederacy at Gettysburg, their strategy was to win that battle and thereby psychologically impact uh, the North, the, the, the uh, Yankees, with the idea that they were going to take Washington. And they hoped their strategy was by taking Gettysburg, they would be able to cause the North, the Union Army, to retreat. That was their strategy. So it wasn't just winning Gettysburg, it was, the strategy was to psychologically impact the North, they couldn't win, and to withdraw. Well, their strategy failed, basically because of lack of communication. Boy, communication is so important. Communication is an art. I tell uh, pastors, ministers, leaders all the time, communication is more than just an email, a fax, a telephone call, issuing orders. That's, that's, that's the least part of communication. Communication is observing, studying, talking, face-to-face -face relationships, husbands and wives. The art of communication is sitting down and listening to each other and speaking to one another. And so few people understand that or are willing to do that. And the reason the South lost Gettysburg is they didn't have communication. They sent out a, a, a scout to go find out what's going on behind enemy lines. Of course, in those days, that's the only way they could glean anything. And the scout might get drunk and be gone for three days. And unbeknownst to the troops, <laughs> the North had refortified, had a new commander, and they were ready for the South. And that's why they lost Gettysburg. Now, we'll pick this up tomorrow and we'll, we'll show you how to win your Gettysburg. We'll show you uh, how to operate according to uh, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, VTN's on Facebook. You can follow us, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me on Twitter, happy underscore Caldwell. And this episode is available to watch online. Log on to vtntv.com and click watch on demand. Also, through the miracle of live stream, people are watching all over the world. VTN is available to watch 24-7. Tell your friends and neighbors that live, your family lives in other states and other nations. And remember, join us tomorrow. Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207. Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. Or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com.